Hi guys, good morning. This is Dr. Ben Benham. I'm a board certified dermatologist and one of the co-founders of Happy Ed. Welcome to another AMA session this Tuesday morning. Uh, uh, so we're going to get started. So first of all, August is uh, Hair Loss Awareness Month. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and, um, you know, we're going to be answering a lot of questions today. Please remember uh, that uh, all the Basically, question and answers here basically do not establish a doctor patient relationship. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please consult your own doctor or one of the doctors at Happy It. Uh, so, how often would you suggest to use a micro roller? You could actually use it every night. Um, uh, so, I would my recommendation to use a 0 0.25 Doma roller, and after you apply the product, you would gently basically roll. Uh, are laser caps also effective in conjunction with topical formulation? The answer is yes. Uh, it really depends on the laser hats. The, the ones with the, with the more number of LED light bulbs are probably the best ones. However, you have to realize that results vary, and number one, not everyone will receive the same results from the laser caps. Um, would you discourage use a whey protein isolate and use a creatine? Absolutely. Creatine is really, really bad. I always tell my patients that I see my, in the clinic, if you're using creatine, go home and just burn it. Do not use it. Do not use it. So, and whey protein isolates are also bad. And the reason is because whey protein isolates, the way they make it is that they actually increase the concentration of certain amino acids like leucine, isoleucine, valine. Um, and as a result, those will actually feed more into the testosterone pathway, so you're creating more testosterone, and as a result, it leads to more DHT production. So, uh, so creatine is bad, and whey protein isolates are bad. You can switch your whey protein isolate to whey protein concentrate, and that will help you. You can buy it on Amazon. It's pretty cheap. Um, if you're taking uh, metoprolol and uh, losartan, are any of the oral agents safe to use? So, so metoprolol is a blood pressure medication. Uh, I mean, I would be cautious about taking oral minoxidil. You have to consult with your own regular doctor, and also it really depends on your blood pressure. So, if you're taking the blood pressure medication and your blood pressure is not controlled, then you know your doctor might say, "Well, taking the oral minoxidil, it's it's good." So, you really got to talk to your doctor about it. Finasteride does not interact with any of these. It's really the oral minoxidil. Now, our super capsule combines both the minoxidil and finasteride. So, again, I would talk to a doctor before taking the super capsule. Um, I have to wash my hair daily because I have a lot. Of, I have like oily scalp. Is the better or recommended brand or type of shampoo I can use? So, good question. So, um, you could actual the brand of shampoo. I don't think really matters. I mean, at Happy Head, we have a really amazing shampoo that will also help. Uh, basically, the hair growth because we made it as biotin and keratin. But what might also be good for you is to get a dry shampoo and you basically just one of those leave in dry shampoos, so it will make your scalp less oily throughout the day. I use my derm roller three times a week and my Happy Head serum right after. Can I also use my wild growth serum right behind it? Sure, yeah, no problem. No problem. Um, how long will it take before I see results for hair growth? It typically takes about four to six months. Three to six, four to six, everyone's different. Uh, and the key is to really try to be consistent as possible using the product twice a day, every day. Uh, oral finasteride and oral testosterone are not just to be taken concurrently, correct? Um, well, oral finasteride, inhibits one of the enzymes of five alpha reductase, and dutasteride inhibits two of the enzymes. So when you take dutasteride, you're really, you're really doing what oral finasteride does. So yeah, so typically we don't combine both together, and I don't think any of our pills has it together. We do have a topical that combines both the finasteride and dutasteride together, and some people do say that when they use that topical, the kitchen sink, they do see better results. Um, so there's probably some synergistic effect that the two have. But if you're taking an oral medication, you could take, uh, I mean, you're either under oral finasteride or under oral dutasteride. We don't recommend taking both together. How do you apply happy if you suffer from diffuse thinning? I usually part my hair in five places and apply it. Is this effective? Yes, that's the correct way of doing it. You could also just put it on. It's basically just rub it everywhere. Is it okay to apply hair oil to your hair before applying happy head to your scalp? Uh, I mean, yes. I think it's probably better to do it the other way. I would apply happy head first 
and then have and app, then apply the hair oil to your scalp as a moisturization. Uh, if I'm using the happy dropper to apply the treatment, is there any benefit to also use the spray treatment offered by Keeps and others? The spray is the same. So Keeps and Hems, the spray version is the same as ours. So you know, there is no point. I think you're just going to increase the irritation more. And actually, I think our concentration of stuff is stronger than Keeps. I think ours is finasteride 0.3%, whereas Keeps is 0.25%. And also ours has more ingredients. So ours has retinoic acid, whereas theirs don't. So uh, ours is stronger, but you don't need to double up. Do you know why my hair will not grow at all? At this point, I don't care about my hair. I've tried just about everything, no joke. So, well, look, there are many reasons. Well, first of all, you have to realize that hair growth really depends upon the the density of your miniaturized hair. So, uh, and also depends on the degree of miniaturization. So, let's say a patient comes in and they're completely bald. Well, you could do whatever you want, but nothing's ever going to grow out. But then you could, you're going to see someone basically that the hair is there, but they're thinning. Those are probably the best candidate because a lot of the hairs are still there. So we look with a magnifier, the hairs are still there, um, but uh, but they're just miniaturized. Oh, you know what we should do the next time? I should bring my big magnifier in and we should really show patients okay. what it looks under the magnification. I think then you guys will get uh, a better understanding uh, because once you see the hair under the large magnifiers, you can really understand why some people are good candidates, some people are not good candidates. I mean, w with me now, like, I could just look at someone and really, you know, make that determination. Uh, but I think looking with a magnifier is great. So we're going to do that at our next AMA session. It's going to be it's going to be fun. But, yeah, so if you're already losing a lot of hair where there's no hair there or the hair is really miniaturized, it's just not going to work. There are also some patients that it just they just don't respond. So, you know, and that's... That's true with everything. I'm currently using the oral minoxyl 2.5 along with the 1 milligram finasteride, but currently not using anything topical. I'm thinking about using the topical dutasteride. Can I use that while I'm taking while I'm taking orally? So great question. So what you, yes. So the answer is yes. You could apply things topically and take things orally. It's called sandwiching. And those patients actually see the best results. Um, you could be taking oral finasteride and add top of the and that is okay as well. As long as you're not having any side effects from the oral finasteride, you're good to do that. I've been using topical finasteride for six months. I have not seen full results. I think what I've been doing, uh, what I've been using is a weak strength. So, so why don't you send us an email at help at and we'll look at your formula. I mean, if we need to, if you're not using the highest concentration, we would certainly s switch it up. Uh, also, we, if you don't respond to top of flash right, there's topical dutasteride that you could use. You could also add the oral, one of the oral medications like oral minoxyl to the regimen. So there are a lot of things we could do. Please reach out to us and we will help. So again, help at happyhead.com. Remember, Happy Head Topical is a customizable formula where we customize the solution just for you. Um, is there an age limit in using the products? I use minoxyl from ages 27 to 50 and then I grow up, but kept the hair. Now I'm 71, the top is thin. Is there anything I could do? Yes, my recommendation is to go on the prescription minoxyl and also probably add the oral uh, super capsule to your regimen. Again, I wouldn't probably start both at the same time. I would probably do topical first for the first month and then add the oral super capsule. Um, at age 71, I think you, we probably at that age need all the help we can get. So again, I would do both. I would do sandwiching both together, but I'm very happy that you did use minoxyl and it kept the hair. Is there option for spray application as opposed to dropper? So initially years ago, back in 2018, believe it or not, before Happy Head was even established, we actually had the, the, the spray in our office that we're testing. The problem with the spray is a couple folds. First of all, the nozzle gets plugged up by the minoxyl, especially during winter months when you ship out the product. Uh, number two, when you apply the spray, and if you have long hair, a lot of the, the chemical, a lot of the product actually sticks on top of the hair and doesn't get to the bottom. That's why, that's why we came up with the dropper. And, and actually, Surprisingly, the entire industry really followed our footsteps as well. I went to a dropper for the most part. Now, you want, you could go to CVS or on Amazon, buy a spray bottle, and just basically pour the dropper in the spray bottle and spray it. The thing is that we don't know like how many sprays, yeah, how many 
sprints you have to do to achieve one ml. But yeah, you could try it. You could test it. Oh, he also said what depth of dermal roller should I be using? We recommend a 0.25% depth. 0.25% depth and use it every night after applying the happy topical on your scalp. I've been on a liquid solution on minoxidil finasteride for over eight weeks and I'm still having a lot of shedding. However, I do see growth in the front. Uh, I want to switch to spironolactone with minoxidil. Would this cut down on the shedding? Um, no, it wouldn't. The shedding is from the minoxidil and not from the finasteride. Also, uh, the, the spironolactone with minoxidil formula is not my favorite one. So uh, I would honestly keep with the minoxidil finasteride formula. I think you're gonna have much better results. And the shedding will, will, will go down. The shedding is normal. It could happen with topical and oral minoxidil. Typically it could last like two to three months. Uh, as long as it's slowing down and seeing more hair growth, I'm optimistic. But let's say if you're using it for three to four months and the shedding doesn't stop, please reach out to us. A lot of patients come to me and tell me that they're still shedding, but you have to realize that the shedding and hair growth are two separate things, actually. You could still be shedding and you could have hair growth. So a lot of those patients after three, four months are still shedding. I always encourage them to send me their photos and we compare the initial photos with, uh, with the four or five month photos. And we always typically see better improvements at four or five months, despite the fact that they're still shedding. Thank you for that question, by the way. Um, part two of my question, why can't the alcohol base be removed from the spinal acne liquid? It's very harsh, um, as is the aloe. Uh, very good question. So the water-based formula, that's what you're referring to, the Aquest formula, um, it's actually a very difficult formula to make. Um, I will take your suggestion back to the board and try to make an alcohol-free spinalacrylate formula. Uh, thank you so much. Can you please actually reach out to us? Um, can you reach out to her? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to have Francesca reach out to you. But again, I'm not sure if it could be done, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll look into it. Um, the solution changes color with time after a few months from yellow to a more orange color. Does that mean it's no, no longer effective? No, it doesn't mean that. So what happens is that um, the reason why it, it's a yellow color is because... Uh, I'm frozen, by the way. I'm like, go okay, perfect, great. Yeah, okay, great. Okay, great. So uh, the reason why it's, it, it has the yellow color is because of the retinoic acid in the formula. Um, and that is normal. As time goes by, it does become darker, and that is normal. It doesn't mean it's not effective. It's just the color changes a little bit, but it doesn't mean anything. Uh, I'm using the finasteride and potassium formula without the mint. Can this or this will be effect as effective? Uh, and I also purchased dermal roller. Thank you for so much for purchasing dermal roller. Yes, it's still effective. If you add the minoxidil, it could be probably a little more effective, uh, but it's still effective. Um, does your top of solution stay in pillowcases? Great question. Sometimes, maybe, I think the yellow may stay in it. We actually don't get that problem at all. That question asked a lot. Uh, it really doesn't. Uh, it really doesn't, but you should try it. Uh, everyone's different. Um, what's your recommendation for 35 year old female? Currently, I'm using oral minoxidil and spironolactone for six months, topical finasteride for four months. Results are lacking. Should I change the test right? So you're currently on oral min and oral spironolactone. I like that. And you're on topical finasteride. I would probably do topical. Uh, yeah, I would probably switch to a dutasteride and do it with minoxidil. Uh, and if that doesn't work, then I would switch. I would go to the fin finasteride dutasteride formula. But the next thing I would try is the dutasteride with topical minoxidil. Uh, and just, you know, just have a blood pressure at home so uh, you could check your blood pressure. Also, it depends on the dose of your oral minoxidil and your dose of spironolactone. So typically when patients are on both, I typically like the minoxidil to be maybe... 1.25, which is half a tablet, and spironolactone to be 25. That is our female super capsule, by the way. Um, I'm using a topical finasteride on the front of my head for over six months with little effect. Is there a better product? I would probably do, I would, if using it for six months, I would probably switch over to a topical dutasteride with minoxidil, and I would do that for another three to four months. If that doesn't help you, then I would switch, I would add. 
I would add oral minoxidil to the regimen. So I would switch to a topical testride, give it a few four months, and then add oral minoxidil to the regimen. Uh, what are the most effective ingredients for hair growth, and why do I know which one is right for me? That's a great question. So, I mean, that's a loaded question. So, most effective ingredients is finasteride and minoxyl. Those are, I think those are the best two ingredients. Uh, and what is right for you, but it really depends. I mean, are you the type of person who's gonna, who's more inclined to do topical or oral? I mean, some people cannot stand putting anything on their head. So, I would advise going the oral route, either doing the oral minoxyl alone by itself, or doing the super capsule. Um, if you don't want to do anything oral, then the, with respect to topical, I would probably go with our standard formula, which is a topical finasteride, minoxyl, and retinoic acid combined. And when you just do, when you do the application online, your doc and you select that you want the topical, your, your doctor will select the best medication for you based upon your photos and past medical history as well. Uh, does it matter how much minoxyl is in my topical? What's the difference between happy and minoxyl and other? So our minoxyl is 8%. I think a lot of other companies' minoxyl is 6%. Also, our product has retinoic acid in it, and I don't believe our competitor, none of them have retinoic acid. In clinical studies, retinoic acid has been shown to increase the efficacy of minoxidil. So our product has four ingredients, minoxidil, finasteride, retinoic acid, and hydrocortisone. And I think our competitor only has three ingredients. So we're better. We have more ingredients and we have also higher concentration because our concentration of minoxidil is stronger than theirs. Um, why are there different? different hair growth ingredients for men and women? That's a great question. Um, well, we'll start, for example, taking the ingredient spironolactone. Spironolactone is a, is a blood pressure medication that is used mainly in females and not in males in the U.S. And the reason is because spironolactone could give guys man boobs, so we just don't use it. Um, Finasteride is a category X medication, so we typically don't use it in females below age 50. So, and so because of those reasons, uh, you know, so that's why there's a different formulas for male and female. Uh, but again, it, it's, uh, you don't, uh, you don't really have to know all that. The, our doctors actually look at you and look at the fact if you're male or female, how old you are, look at your hair, uh, look at your past medical history and your, what do you've used in the past. And based upon that, they will suggest the best recommendation just for you. Hair loss statistics. In honor of Hair Loss Awareness Month, hair loss we know affects 80 million people in the U.S. 40% of are, are uh, actually are, are females, and hair loss affects 63% of men above the age 35. Would it be okay to take oral minoxidil and spironolactone along with topical? Yes, it would be okay. Just please be careful because both minoxidil and spironolactone could affect your blood pressure and drop it. My, uh, the, the, the happy head female super capsule has oral minoxidil of 1.25 and spironolactone of 25 milligrams. I have high blood pressure and my doctor is willing to switch me to those. That's perfect. So you could go on the oral minoxidil and oral spironolactone. Again, doing the female super capsule, you are, you, it's basically three medications all in one capsule, streamlines the process. And I tell you from the patients that are currently using it, they are happier because it's easier to take one pill than three pills. I think the female super capsule has spironolactone, minoxidil, and vitamin D all combined together. So it, it's really helpful. I will highly look at the female super capsule. Which of the product is best for frontal area of the head? I'm using a finasteride with little results for six months. Again, it, first of all, it really depends how much hair you've lost in the front. So, I mean, our topical finasteride minoxyl combination is still great. If you're not seeing results, I would probably add oral minoxyl to the regimen. Don't stop the topical because sandwiching is always the best. If you use topical and do oral, you are going to see the best results. So if you're not seeing results with the topical finasteride minoxyl in the front, I would add the oral. But the oral minoxyl, but also you have to realize, you're not going to grow hair in areas of loss. So if you have a high widow's peak, you will not grow hair in those widow's peak area. You're going to grow hair in an area where you're thinning, thinning. Okay. First of all, love the product. Thank you. I've seen significant hair growth where my hair was thinning, receding. Would it behoove me to explore through happy and an oral medication in addition to using the liquids? Or should I just stick with the liquids? Um, 
Yes, so we have noticed that people that do both topical, the liquid, and the oral see better results. So if using the standard topical happy formula, add, adding on the oral minoxidil, which you just get on our website, will really help you a lot. There's also the, the male super capsule, which contains the finasteride, and minoxidil combined one capsule. Uh, and people that do the super capsule and topical happy, I'm telling you, those are the people that see the most amazing results. Because at that point, you are doing topical finasteride plus minoxidil and oral finasteride and minoxidil. And again, thank you so much for those kind words. If I decide to stop using the topical and switch to oral super capsule, does that cause shedding cycle again? It, it, it shouldn't, but it may. But it usually shouldn't. What I would do, I would actually overlap the two together. So I would continue the topical and add a super capsule for a month or two and then taper down the topical. I am adding dutasteride to my prescription. When I do this, the amount of finasteride will go down from 0.25 to 0.1. Do you really feel that lowering the finasteride to add to is a good idea? So it's a great question. So see, we've noticed we have to lower the finasteride concentration because the, otherwise you're going to overload the system. And but we have noticed that despite the fact that you lower the finasteride by adding the tasteride to that regimen, somehow still basically sparks a fire and causes more hair growth. So you're doing two different medications slightly lower dose, but you're combating from basically many different angles. So from our clinical experience, the answer is yes, it's still worth it. Is there an age where not much can be done anymore? It's not necessarily an age thing. It's more, it's more like, you know, how much hair do you have? So, I mean, look, I saw a patient yesterday. He's 76 years old. He actually has still a lot of hair, but he's thinning. And look with the magnifier. And, like, a lot of his hairs were miniaturized, but not completely gone. So I think he's still a good candidate. Last week, I saw a 31-year-old, I mean, I'm sorry, 30-year-old gentleman, where he was practically bald. So that 30-year-old is not a candidate for any topical, no oral. I mean, he's bald. Whereas that gentleman in the mid seventies, you know, he still has hair, but he's just thinning, so he's still candid. So it's not just the age; age is not necessarily determining factor um, whether you could use any of these happier medications. It's really the density, it's really how you look, and this is why your photos are important when you submit it to the happier doctors because they have to look at your hair to determine if you're candid or not. Um, happier topical uh, smells bad. Is there a better way to apply it? Uh, yes, so it, it's the female spironolactone formula that unfortunately smells. The spironolactone smells like rotten egg, unfortunately. And that's why it's not my most fit, popular formula. And we really tried like a lot of different things to really reduce that. Um, I mean, there's really, unfortunately, nothing else we could done, we could be done. Uh, I mean, you could always go on the female super capsule, which has the same ingredients, but in the oral pill. Uh, also, if it leaves the hair dry, uh, I would probably use a conditioner and also a leave-in conditioner. I am using the most expensive shampoo um, and also prescription uh, ketoconazole at 2%. Can I do better? And if so, what can I do? I have very oily hair. How should I shampoo morning and night? So yeah, so our recommendation typically is to shampoo just once a day. But if you really have really oily, then shampooing twice a day must probably... If you need to do it, then you need to do it. Um, you could also use a leave-in. Um, you could also do like a, a leave-in conditioner, like a, a like a dry shampoo. You could also use a, a leave-in dry shampoo, and that will help uh, basically dry out your scalp as well. Uh, I do like the ketoconazole. I mean, if you want anything else with respect to hair growth, I think using the topical oral medications are probably the best thing to do. With respect to oily hair, it's really just washing it out and using like a dry shampoo. That's what I recommend. Uh, I previously took the five milligram postcard twice a week, but I had side effects. My testicle ached and, I, and it was sensitive, so I stopped. And slowly the hair loss began, increased. If I use a topical flash, I would get similar results. So, so. The whole point of Happy Head was actually, when we started Happy Head, was to try to somehow uh, come up with a product that had a low risk of sexual side effects. And, you know, and the topical does, you know, based upon our clinical studies and also clinical studies that are out there as well. Um, so if you had side effects with the oral, I would definitely encourage you to try the topical. And you could even try using the topical that's 0.1%. Uh, because remember, Happy Head is customizable. Uh, 
So, and you're probably not going to have, you, you may, or you, you're probably not going to have side effects, but there's still a slight chance that you could still have side effects with the topical, but it's a lower risk. So I would def I think it's worth to try. Um, also, I would not do it like once a day, every day. I would probably try to touch it up slowly. So even with a topical, I would probably do like twice a week and then three times a week, then four times a week. Um, also, you were that minoxidil 5% seems to be making my hair loss worse and it gets my scalp irritated. Um, so the minoxidil in our topical could be a little bit more tolerable, despite the fact that it's a higher concentration. We do have aloe vera and some hydrocortisone in it that reduces the irritation. So my recommendation for you would be to the minoxidil 6% or to the, and combine it with the finasteride 0.1%. Uh, then this way, I think it might be just better for you. And remember, you can always change out the formula. We're customizable, so we're here to help you out. Please reach out to us at help at happy ed, uh, or when you submit your question online, uh, please say Dr. Ben, I'm recommended doing the finasteride 0.1 and minoxidil 6%. Um, okay, having an increase of dosage will hair growth make it thicker? Um, I mean, sometimes, yes. So, for example, uh, I mean, some patients are on the finasteride 0.1%. You could go on the finasteride 0.3%, and that could potentially give you better results. I'm adding dutasteride to my prescription. I now see a new ingredient, latanoprost. Should I consider adding that instead of dutasteride? I think dutasteride is probably going to do better than the, than the nano, latanoprost. Uh, latanoprost is in some of the formulas. Uh, it is also help with the hair. It's basically the lattice that people put on their eyelashes. It could help, but I think dutasteride, if you have to pick between the two, I think dutasteride is probably a better formula ingredient. What happens when the scalp applicants stop after a year? Well, a lot of the patients go on maintenance therapy because, you know, once you stop, you're just going to completely, you know, you're going to lose all the gains. So, so the answer would be to go on maintenance where you're doing it maybe once a day, but a lot of patients still continue to do it twice a day, even after a year, to maintain the growth. What is the benefit to use a topical finasteride and combo once a day and minoxidil once per day to reduce side effects? So would it be beneficial to use the topical once a day and just use the topical minoxidil once a day? Sure, yeah, you could do that. It's not a problem. Um, is hair shedding due to creatine use reversible? That's a good question. Uh, sometimes yes, sometimes no. It all depends. But my recommendation is that if you're using the creatine, please stop right away. How much should I worry about prostate cancers if taking the oral detasteride minoxidil pill? Well, the minoxidil pill, I mean, there, I mean there's no increase of cancer. Um, the oral detasteride, well, oral detasteride and oral finasteride were initially introduced in the U.S. as enlarged prostate medications. Um, you have to check in with your doctor. So my recommendation is to do a PSA every year while you're on it, uh, and that's the best way to check and just see your urologist. Hi, Dr. Bano. I'm turning. I'm turning now. I'm not sure if it's already been spoken, but I was wondering, since the dosage of finasteride has been changed a little bit to 0.3, shouldn't that mean that the dosage that we read, the 0.25 version, so, yes, yeah, so wait a second. So, yes, yeah, so, so we increased the dosage of finasteride from 0 0.25 to 0 0.3, but I'm not sure what the question is. I mean, can you go back to 0.25? Yes, you can. Just email us at Help Happy Ed, and we can switch you back to a 0.25 formula. Uh, does it work for a woman that's 69 with thinning hair around the crown? Uh, yes, it could. So females could get the finasteride with minoxidil formula. Uh, again, look, if you're not bald, and again, as long as you have hair and you could see through, then yes, it could work. Well, guys, I didn't realize it's 1029. Just time flies so fast. I wonder what is the point of the product with both finasteride and dutasteride in it. Is it better to just choose one or to do both together? So my recommendation is at the beginning, just do one and see how you do. Uh, the kitchen sim formula where you have the finasteride and dutasteride together is mainly used for patients who have failed each one of those individually. Uh, without the minoxidil, is there anything else I would, you would suggest for diffuse area in the back of the head? I'm currently using finasteride plus dutasteride mix. Um, so I would honestly add the minoxidil to the regimen. If you are still using the finasteride with dutasteride uh, and you're not seeing results, I would add, again, I would add the topical minoxidil or add oral minoxidil uh, to the regimen. Um, I currently do not have air conditioner at home. It must be hot. And my apartment can get into high 80s. 
can this cause the formula to go bad? No, no. But but it's, but it's hot though. Hi, it is hot. I've had hair transplant two months ago. I'm currently using the oral as well as topical treatments. I will continue for another four months. Can I stop using these after I see growth, or do I need to take these? So here is the problem. See, let's say we had hair transplant here, right? So um, once you stop, the problem is that you're still risking all the other hairs to lose. So what we do in the office is that when we do hair transplant, we still encourage our patients at least to take the oral or topical kind of indefinitely so you at least maintain the rest of the other hairs so you don't go thinning there or balding the rest. Uh, when are you going to get an app to make ordering easier? We're working on it. I don't think we're ever going to come up with the app, at least not anytime soon, but we're really working on just making the website flow easier. Uh, the team, is, it's a constant struggle, I swear. We were, we're, but thank you for that recommendation. I will take that to the board. Um, I think I missed the answer to this. I'm using the finasteride and the formulation with aminoxyl. Will this be as effective? Yes, it's still very effective. I'll use it for four to six months. If you feel that you're not getting as much hair growth, then I'll add the topical minoxyl to regimen as well. Uh, if I switch to tastra minoxyl, will the smell be better than spironolactone minoxyl? Yes, absolutely. But but it, our doctors will not write it for you if you're below the age of 50. So to use that formula, you have to be above 50. So uh, so for, it's just called, as, a, as a closing statement, guys, um, again, so we have a few products that are coming out. We have the uh, female uh, super capsule, which is a combination of spironolactone and minoxyl. We also have our topical uh, latanoprost, which is just released. Uh, and uh, we also just launched our topical finasteride and the liposomal formula. The liposomal formula um, is uh, basically has been shown to reduce some of the sexual side effects. Um, associated with finasteride because uh, it does not get absorbed as much. Uh, so you could, could also explore that as well. Uh, again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, please remember uh, that uh, none of this conversation basically established a patient-doctor relationship. Um, these are all just for all entertainment purposes. If you have any questions, uh, please consult your regular doctor or the happier doctors basically to get your question answered. Uh, again, I would really appreciate if you guys could take one minute and go to our trust pilot and leave us a review. It is your help and your reviews that basically really helps us uh, basically to grow and expand and actually also allow us to really offer more products. Uh, we are currently working on an amazing product that hasn't come out yet, but it will come out soon. It's a product that will revolutionize, I think, the hair industry. It, we've figured out a way how to uh, almost really reduced some of the sexual side effects of oral finasteride. Uh, so please stay tuned, uh, and that will be coming out in the next uh, few months. Uh, also, next time we're going to bring our handheld magnifier, and we'll probably have one of some of our assistants. We'll, 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 we'll check out their scalp, so it will be fun and exciting, and we'll air that. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, please stay cool out there. Uh, again, I will say goodbye. Thanks so much for the team to make putting this together. Have a beautiful.